Good morning. I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this time of worship, uh, whether you're joining us here or online. And a special welcome to you today if uh, this is your birthday month, whether uh, it's January or February, you can see the balloons over there. We're celebrating birthdays, so this is part of our uh, gratitude moment. Uh, today, uh, we it's hosted, the cake is made by... Kathy Dispenza and the uh, reception is hosted. Where's Emily? Emily, yes, Emily is hosting us uh, for this reception. And so uh, they want to restart an old tradition, but with a new flavor. And hopefully you can stay and celebrate. And as you walked in, if you had a birthday in January or February, you are supposed to be wearing a hat. So we can wish you a happy birthday. You can wait till after the service. Uh, today also our gratitude moment is for the Easter egg hunt that is coming up in uh, March, March 23rd. And so we invite uh, anyone with children, grandchildren, if your neighbors, invite anyone. Uh, ben, do you want to say anything about it? This year we're partnering, this is something new for us, we're partnering with the Virgin Food Pantry. They're doing it as a fundraiser. They will have baskets and other items uh, to raffle, and so they would like uh, our support. So the event is free, but there is that option. So uh, we hope that you will uh, spread the word, let people know about this fun event. So it's on the 23rd at 11 a.m. There will be donuts. Too, so just so you, you know. Um, to, today is uh, another Sunday in uh, the season of Lent. We've been journeying and, and looking at how God could uh, use this time as we prepare for spring, as we are feeling uh, the earth uh, returning and the light uh, returning to more life, as we can see it. Of course, in the winter, there's life. It just seems dormant and resting. And now the season is about opening up to new ways. And our theme is uh, seeking honest questions for deeper faith. So last week we started uh, with a question is who will listen, who will you listen to? And this week we're, we have a different question. How do we begin again? And so this question is supposed to be about looking at the opportunities that are given to us each and every day to begin anew. Uh, there is a wonder wall, and we hope that you'll use those, I mean, it's, it's several walls, but the idea is to use them to ask questions, to share reflections, maybe to read a prayer, or to think about where you, you're longing, what you are seeking, and then also what God is seeking through you. Uh, the idea of beginning again is not always easy for us. Uh, in uh, the Buddhist tradition, there's this concept of beginner's mind, and they all, always talk about the idea of beginning everything, even the, the things that you do on a regular basis, like eating breakfast. If you ate breakfast this morning, uh, what was your experience like? Same as always. Nothing, you know, yeah, not, most of us just kind of go on autopilot. You're just, just eating breakfast. But the invitation of that kind of tradition is to take that and pretend like it's the first time you're eating breakfast and not, ta not have expectations, but to really be open. And so it's, the idea behind it is to have your mind be in the same place and your spirit, that you are able to begin again each day. And in our Bible stories today, we hear about two characters who were asked um, to begin again. One is Abram. This was before he became Abraham. And, and the other is about Nicodemus. Uh, so Abraham uh, was asked to begin again, uh, to leave what he knew and to journey in order to enter into a land of the land of promise. And the idea was behind it that he had to let go of the security of what he knew. Nicodemus uh, sought out Jesus at night. Jesus, uh, he came to Jesus at night because he had heard him. He had seen things from Jesus, and he himself was a teacher. And he had to come to see what this new teaching was about, what this new teacher was about. And so Nicodemus was invited to also begin again. So today the invitation is like, 
Nicodemus, and we are invited to ask the questions, to come in that time of listening to God. What is, what is it that is stirring in our hearts? And the same with Abram and Sarai. How do we follow God's calling to begin again? So I invite you to center yourself and open your heart to God in this moment of grace. Take a deep breath. And be present to this time of prayer. God, we give you thanks for your gifts of life. Your gift of gathering us in this time, in this space, or wherever we are. To open our hearts to you. To ask questions. To seek. And to let you seek within us. May the stirrings of our hearts to begin again, to renew our lives and our hearts, be strong enough that we're able to listen to them and to trust them. We pray this in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen.
And so the invitation today to begin again. How do we begin again when the Spirit of God prompts us to begin again? And when the path of life may be shattered before us, maybe you've lost somebody recently, maybe you are going through a tough time, maybe there is a change within you, maybe there is just a sense of life is just the same day in and day out. Wherever you are, there's that deep invitation, there's this deep longing within our hearts to embrace life each day with the power of the Spirit. And so today I uh, would like to begin with a quote from Alexei Navalny. And this is, I, I, it's been really resonating with me. It said, he said, listen, I've got something very obvious to tell you. You're not allowed to give up. If they decide to kill me, it means that we are incredibly strong. And uh, just a powerful reminder because it is so easy to give up. It's so easy to feel defeated and to feel that sense of despair in life when things don't go well. I mean, all of us have those times in our lives when life just isn't what it should be or where life is a challenge. Uh, there are days when you know things are going well and it's easy to have that sense of hope and the sunshine is going, but there are days when it's a lot of challenge and it may be at that moment where a lot of people feel that sense of despair. I certainly felt that sense of despair when I heard the news about his death, knowing that he had been killed unjustly and by a, a power that seems hungry for hurting people and we see the effects of that, especially this is the second anniversary for the war. And it's really incredible to see the oppression at, and how it's hurting millions of people. And so it's easy to go to that place of saying, what could change? What could change? But that's the power of beginning again. And that's the importance of beginning again. A message of hope for a time of despair for us. And today, those Bible stories that I just referenced uh, are about that. People who are stuck in the old ways or in ways that don't give life are called out of that. And people who might be seeking something deep within them saying, you got to seek something different. And so those two men that we're looking at today are men of influence. And so to think about the first one, Abraham, or Abram at that, at that point, he was called to leave his home. Now, when sometimes when we're reading Bible stories, we hear, oh, you know, he's going to go into the land of promise. That sounds really great. Sounds like, you know, an upgrade. Or we think of uh, people like that, are go, that go to... Um, from country to country because you know they are seeking a better life or something is uh, not working in their home and they have to leave to go uh, elsewhere to just even survive but that wasn't the case for Abraham this is just a rendition of the city where he lived the city of Ur uh, and this is ancient Mesopotamia and oftentimes it's neglected the Egypt gets all the glory with the pyramids but when you think of Mesopotamia it was pretty equal in its importance and civilization and development homes uh, were really large and he came from wealth he had slaves, he had uh, people uh, following him, he had flocks, and so he was, he was a, a wealthy man being asked to abandon the security of his home, of what he knew, to go into this unknown land because the Spirit was stirring him. He had this vision. And so let's listen to the call that came to him. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. So if you think about that, you know, this is the big sacrifice that he's being asked to, to make. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. So God had a different plan for his, for his life. Abram uh, was living comfortably 
But his call was to start a new movement of faith. His, and of course, he, no one knows these things when they're happening to them. You know, you don't know when you feel a stirring to do something or to start a project. Oh yeah, it's going to be the greatest project in the world. Most of us, actually, when, whenever we think those thoughts, those projects are definitely doomed to fail. <laughs> Usually when you're like, oh, I'm not sure if I should do this, but something is saying I should, and you start talking to others and they affirm that, so, so this is the call. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So this is another important part. This was not a call just so Abraham would become this great person. This was a call to serve others. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. How do you like that part? 75 years old, not, you know, ready to move. I mean, in the Bible, even even if, if, if it was, this was exaggerated in terms of age, still, it's, it's showing us he was not at the prime of his life and should be considering moving and going places. I remember when, in 2015, when um, we had told my parents, you know, with the war raging in Syria, we said, you know, you gotta move. You gotta move out of Syria. Oh, we're too old, you know? And they were just at that point, why do we want to start again? Uh, we're like, well, what about us? Those of us who feel like, you know, we would want to help you if you got sick, something happens, we would not be able to go to Syria. So what would happen? But the resistance, well, you see it. I mean, so those of you might be going through it yourself, but you may have parents or grandparents who are resisting any change uh, because it, it's, not, it's not the time in life when you want to change. So this is, this is one part of the, the picture. Another part of the picture is another man who was settled in his own ways and had his status. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. He was recognized. He was a Pharisee. He was a leader in the Sanhedrin. He had everything going for him. But something caught his attention when he saw Jesus in Jerusalem. And he went to him at night. And in the Gospel of John, where the story is told, whenever you hear night and, and day, uh, it, it talks about the darkness of the world and the voices of doubt and fear and, and uh, scarcity and evil to the light, the light of love. And so, uh, so Nicodemus is coming at night because he's fearful. He's afraid. What would, what would the others say if they knew, if he is this high status man coming to talk with this young, new, nobody uh, rabbi? Think about it, you know. Would, would someone expose themselves as needing wisdom from someone like that? And so let's listen to the part of the story. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. So he's acknowledging that there's something about Jesus. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. This is the beginning again. You've got to begin again. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And think about the statement in terms of the beginner's mind. You know, the Spirit comes and blows, and uh, God's uh, stirrings in our hearts are always beyond anything we are programmed to know and, and feel and think about. And the key is to be open, to be born again over and over again. Our evangelical uh, brothers and sisters oftentimes make it sound like it's just one and done. 
you got to be born again. And okay, you say, I believe in Jesus, and all the magic happens. But we know in, in real life, that's not how it works. How many of you have had those deep spiritual experiences only to come crashing down just the following week? Uh, it's, not, it's not a steady line. It is, uh, it is born again over and over again, being uh, open to that spirit. And so uh, one of the challenges, of course, for this, uh, or a couple of the challenges, one is fear of failure. Uh, or resistance because we have resistance to change we have resistance to always being open uh, we like to close the door and thank you very much and feel safe but this is about keeping the door open keeping your heart open your mind open and then there is a rigid religious teaching oftentimes that it is about these belief systems actually this past week we were discussing um, the creeds in the church. This was as part of the Bible study the, that's online. It was really interesting, you know, there are those creeds and they are taken out of context and often said, oh, this is the truth forever and ever. We forget, these were people like us who were trying and wrestling with their faith and yes, their words are instructive to us, they don't always speak the truth to our context today. There are challenges that come again and again, and, and a statement of faith is something we live into and we wrestle with. And maybe today I'm certain of this, but tomorrow I may question and open my heart to something new. So what I know today may become the hindrance for tomorrow's connection to God. And so the invitation is to look at these two men and their faith and their experience of opening the door, of letting life be, letting the spirit blow where it wills. And so um, I want to share with you a quote from Barbara Brown Taylor, and this is from a book called An Altar in the World. And in the book, she really uh, uses this, this imagery of wandering in the world and being in that experience of, of the spirit and making an altar wherever you are. And so she says, in my life, I've lost my way more times than I, count, than I can count. I've set out to be married and ended up divorce, divorced. I have set out to be healthy and ended up sick. I've set out to live in New England and ended up in Georgia. When I was 30, I set out to be a parish priest, spending the rest of my life caring for souls in any congregation that would have me. Almost 30 years later, I teach school. While none of these displacements was pleasant at first, I would not give a single one of them back. I found things while I was lost that I might never have discovered if I had stayed on the path. So life happens as we're making other plans. When you think about all the things, the turns and twists, and how you, you hear the nudge of the Spirit. But more so, it's about the attitude. Because sometimes we don't even have to change a thing about what we're doing in daily life. We just need to change the way we think about things. Because you could be just as happy where you are. And you could be just as effective in serving God. You don't have to be like Abram. You could be like Nicodemus. Abram, was call his calling was to leave his home country. But Nicodemus was actually called to embrace where he was and to change the way he was thinking. And that's what happened for Nicodemus. Later on in the story, he becomes part of the Jesus movement. And so today, uh, I invite you to consider where the Spirit is calling you. Where are you being nudged to start again? What might God be calling you to do? What security, fear, discouragement, or comfort do you need to let go of? And think about that. Because sometimes it's the discouragement within our hearts that nothing is going to change. Nothing. I'm just, you know, I don't know my place in the world. Or, you know, statements, think about the statements we say to ourselves. The discouragement that has taken hold of our hearts and our minds. And the invitation to open up. And to pray. To say, God, how do I get reborn again? 
I have, uh, and today as you go to the Wonder Wall, maybe that's part of your processing. There is an image here by Camille uh, Beaujolais, and she's uh, the artist. She's imagining. You might have read this in the bio, in the weekly Bible devotional that I send out, but. Uh, this image is of Nicodemus, and she talks about her experience of growing up in a church uh, that was Pentecostal, and the name of the church in Spanish was uh, Rebirth. And so the idea was to always be reborn of the Spirit. But so she surrounded him is with his old age, with uh, the water around him. That's, that's oftentimes an image of baptism. But if you see his eyes are closed or he's squinting, he's struggling to see. But he is in the mother's womb. If you see the image, it's the water of the womb. Uh, and to think about that imagery, that he's back being reborn of the spirit and there's the light he's coming in the darkness but there's the light in his life i just love the imagery that is just so powerful to speak to us about all the struggles of life but then all the light and possibility and and re-entering that womb of life whatever that is for you and so um i just want to take a moment and give you time to have any thoughts, reactions, reflections, questions? Hmm? Well, I'm, I, okay, well, I'll say it since you looked at me. Oh. Um, it looks like he just ate a really good cookie. He ate a really good cookie. Could be. Could be. All right. Yeah, tell me more. Well, because you can, if you, if you take stock in this, then, you know, no matter, I mean, not that you should run around and, you know, do bad things so that you can say, oh, well, I get another chance. Right. That's a different point. But, you know, um, just to say that, that no matter where you go and what you do, um, there's always, you know, another day. I like that. There is always a new day. And it could be about other people the same way when we give up on people. That somebody in our lives or in our world we give up on. Yes, Bonnie? I think it's um, beautiful that it's on the birthday, celebration day. Yes. On our birthdays we kind of think, oh, it's a new year and have all these possibilities. But that's really every day if we think about it. Yes. Every day we're being born again. But perfect on birthdays. Who would have thought you timed it perfectly, Emily? But think about that piece. When every year we say, what do you, get, what do, you do? You make a wish, you uh, pray, you, um, you look at your life and think about what is God stirring in my life right now? What is this gift of another day, another year, another hour? Uh, because that's sometimes all we have. We don't know how long we're going to live, but we have the gift and the, the possibility of something new and the possibility of the world being born new. Um, it's, not, it's not beyond hope. Anybody else? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And there was such a connection to letting go because you release, you sweat, you pray for hours. Mm -hmm. And in case you don't, many people don't realize that actual sweat lodge represents the loop. Wow. So okay. You call in, you pray, you release, you sweat, and you leave physically you renewed. Yeah. Yes, and reborn. Mm -hmm. But having these rituals, yes, these routine rituals that allow us that opportunity to let go and to be reborn. Like that, that's powerful. Wow. Yes, Tom. Well, attending the presbytery meetings when a new candidate is up for ordination, mm -hmm. they always supply their statement of faith. Mm. And in one way, you're looking at it that. 
the presbytery is making sure they're on the right path, but all of these established <coughs> members of the church then read this new person's statement of faith and question it and listen to their explanation. And it sometimes it's like, oh, okay, I get that. And it's a chance for the establishment to view it as the new people. So it's, it, it's a blessing for those who have been around for a while to hear a new experience of faith. Yeah, so it's, it's keeping that door open all the time and, and looking at ways we are intentional about it too. Uh, so making sure that it's not just oh, every day is the same or I got I to gotta have things just the same because it feels comfortable or it feels safe. You know, Ur, the city of Ur sounds great. I wouldn't want to go to the land of promise. I don't care what land of promise might look like. Um, but that's kind of the, the idea is that he had to let go. He had to, and he faced many dangers on the, on the journey. So it wasn't an easy thing. It wasn't a, a simple kind of path. Um, it, sometimes we think we hear, oh, you know, God is blessing me. I'm having this great uh, spiritual enlightening experience. And then, then you have a challenge and you think, oh, I thought this was, we made an agreement, you know. <laughs> I was going to do what you wanted me to do, and we're going to be all okay. I'm going to feel good all the time. I'm not going to have those valleys. What is this? But it's about opening and staying open. Anything else? Well, one thing I thought of when you said that, it's, it's funny. It's like the better thing is good. It's kind of like a video game. Like, like challenges only come as you progress. As, as you, you get progress. better, yeah. yes. When you yeah. don't do that, there's really not anything challenging going on. Right. It gets boring, yeah. 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 There's no growth. Okay, so we're, uh, I'm going to read a poem. This is by Sarah Speed, and it's called How do, How do We Begin Again? And it's based on this whole idea. This is from a Sanctified Art. And after that, in preparation for communion, we will watch a video about the, that we started watching last week, and it's a song about uh, staying also open, the land of the seeking. So let's listen to these words as an invitation for us. Do we slide into, new, into something new? Do we make a formal announcement? Dearest reader, I have decided to begin again. Do we turn gradually, a gentle yield in a new direction? Do we crash onto the shore of a new day? Do we grieve the change? Are there breadcrumbs on the path? Will Nicodemus be there? Will it ever be easy? I'm not sure exactly how we begin again, but I know that moths wrap themselves in silk. And after quite, uh, after quite some time, after many long nights, after days spent alone, they break out of their shell. They pull themselves out under open sky, and they spend the rest of their days chasing the light. May it always be that way with beginnings. May, oh, sorry. Maybe it's always that way with beginnings. Maybe it feels like the protective layer falling away. Maybe we have to go, to go it alone. Maybe it feels like pulling and dragging yourself into something new. Maybe there's always open sky at the other end. So whatever it is for you today, as you listen to the song, as you uh, are invited to communion, uh, Cameron will be uh, playing some music for us, medita meditation type music, with the invitation to really go into that place of seeking within your heart. Uh, not a depressed place, but a, a place of openness, and actually a great place of joy, and a place maybe in entering into that water of baptism, of rebirth, whatever it is for you. So let's listen. There's a place you can get to without any sound. It's a place where the wick has burned out. There's a place at the point that's past turning around 
There is a place to be lost long after you're found There's a land you can reach if you follow yourself It's a land beyond hoarding your fears so to quell There's a land where the bottom falls out of the well There is a land where your worry and wonder can dwell Coax your quiet questionings Speak your soft uncertainties There is room for thee in the land of the seeking Draw a map without borders and see where you go In the cover of night call a question a home Past the edge of the fences you're never Where your worry and wonder are no Coax your quiet questionings Speak your soft uncertainties There is room for these In the land of the seeking The compass points straight to the heart of a shadow of a doubt The key is the most honest thing that you can't speak aloud There is no wrong way to be unsure of things There is no wrong way to the land of the seeking Coax your quiet Questionings Speak your soft uncertainties There is room for thee In the land of the seeking And so we come to this time when we open our hearts to the mystery of faith that where we belong at the table of God's love and we are invited as those who are part of the family of faith, whether we've been here a long time or this is our first time to come to the table, whether we've had a great week or we've had a week of failure. The invitation is the same because it is God's grace and it is one of the ways the Spirit sustains us and keeps us open to that grace of new love, a new life, a new birth. So I invite you to pray with me. God, we give you thanks for this invitation to seek, to walk with you, to journey and to trust. Not knowing the answers, not knowing the roadmaps, but knowing you knowing the essence of life, the energy of love. And so we come to this table seeking, seeking to be renewed, to be embraced, to be sent out. And so we ask that you may bless these gifts to us, that they may become to each one of us your very presence. We pray this in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we remember that on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, reminding them that he was not going to drink from it until he drank from it again in the kingdom of heaven, in the new reality of life. And the invitation was for them to take the bread and eat 
the eat it, remembering his presence, but also to share in the cup, reminding them of the unity of the spirit that they would share and that they would bring this kind of brokenness and oneness to the rest of their experiences, but also to bless those around them. And so we come open to the spirit and the invitation is the same for each of us to come and to receive these gifts. We invite you to come forward and uh, as you feel moved to take a piece of bread and dip it in a cup or to take a cup and partake as you feel called, this is the gluten-free option. Come for all is ready. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this feast of your love, for the experience of your grace at the table. We pray that you may send us out to live by this wisdom of beginning again each day and trusting you to lead us on the path of love and life. Amen.
May these words and all the words and thoughts that we shared and the spirit that we shared take you through this week. And as you leave this place, may God bless you with seeking. Seek out the hungry. Seek the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful. Seek the faithful. Seek God in each of us. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for. In the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us, go now in peace. Amen. And happy birthday to all those January, February birthdays. And uh, let them have cake. Let them eat cake, I guess. Something like that. <laughs> It was a good save.